Today I'm going to be running through a quick installation and first look of the recently released Ubuntu 24.10 codenamed Oral Outcry. That's not right. Oracular Oriole. Now what the heck is Oracular? Let me pull up a browser, do a quick Google search. Oracular. Oh wow, I should probably turn safe search on. Of or relating to an oracle. So let me spin up a quick virtual machine and let's run through the installation. So I created a virtual machine and when you first boot up Ubuntu 24.10 it launches the installation program full screen and I do apologize for those of you watching this video because I know the white application here this blinding white light is probably you know really hard on your eyes if you're watching the video really Ubuntu should consider creating a dark theme for their installation program but you know this is their new flutter based installer that they came out with just a, a year or so ago and I really do like the fact that the Ubuntu branding here, you can see 20 years Ubuntu, and this does mark the 20 year anniversary of Ubuntu's first release because the very first version of Ubuntu was 4.10 Wardy Warthog that came out, of course, in October of 2004. So this version of Ubuntu does mark the 20 year anniversary. So I'm going to run through a quick installation. Let me move my head out of the way and first choose the language for the installation program. English is chosen for me, so I don't need to do anything thing except click next here. Now this is really neat, accessibility in Ubuntu, and you have several categories that you could actually click on here. So if I click on seeing, uh, do I actually need to go to the arrows? Yeah. And then I could toggle on and off certain accessibility uh, programs, for example, if I was um, visually impaired or hearing impaired, if I could go to the hearing category and turn on visual alerts in this case. So this is actually pretty neat. Uh, of course, I don't need to turn on any of this stuff for myself, so I'm just going to skip that and click next. Next up, choose the keyboard layout. English US has been chosen for me, and that is correct, so I'll just click next. Next up, connect to the internet, use a wired connection, and that is what I'm on. I'm on an ethernet connection, so I don't need to do anything else itself click next and then do I want to install Ubuntu or do I want to try Ubuntu so try Ubuntu means don't run through the installation just you know close the the installer and let me just play around in a live desktop environment but for me I'm gonna run through the proper installation so I'm gonna do the install Ubuntu option and click next and then do I want to do the interactive installation which is your standard installation process or do you want to do the automated installation and you can see this is for advanced users who have an auto install dot YAML file for consistent and repeatable system setup. So if you're installing Ubuntu to multiple machines and you need the same configuration for a lot of different machines, you could have a, I guess, a YAML file that you could feed into the installer and it always sets up Ubuntu the exact same way for you. That's interesting, but for me, I'm just going to choose the interactive installation. Next is choosing what apps you want to start with and I'm going to choose default selection. So this is just the essentials, your web browser and some basic utilities. They do have an extended selection, which also installs a full office suite and some other extra tools. For me, I'm just going to go with the default selection, a more minimal installation. And then finally, do you want to install third party software for graphics and Wi-Fi? So this is your third party drivers for things like your NVIDIA card or possibly your uh, Wi-Fi chip and your laptop needs a proprietary driver. So always tick this on. If you're unsure uh, whether you need this proprietary software, tick this on. And this really needs to be a default selection, probably for legal reasons. They don't have it ticked on by default. And the same with this here, download and install support for additional multimedia formats. You need to tick that on as well. That's going to give you some proprietary multimedia codecs that you also need for proper audio video playback. Now I'm going to click next and now I need to choose how do I want to install Ubuntu? Do I want to erase the disk and give the entire virtual hard drive of this virtual machine over to Ubuntu or do I want to do a manual installation and you know, manually partition the drives? For me I'm going to do the erase disk and install Ubuntu option. I'm just going to let Ubuntu format the drive for me, do the automatic partitioning and click next. Now I need to go ahead and create my username for this computer. I'm going to call my user DT and then for the host name of this computer I'm going to call it Ubuntu-VM and then I need to create a strong and complicated password for my DT user and then repeat the strong and complicated password 
And then finally, do you want to require the password to log in that is ticked on by default? I would leave that ticked on by default. You should always have to enter a password to get into any computer just for privacy reasons. And then use Active Directory. I don't use Active Directory. It's ticked off by default. I will leave that ticked off by default. Now I'll click Next. Finally, choose the time zone. It has correctly chosen the central time zone in the US for me, so I don't need to do anything except click Next. And then finally, review your choices. So everything here looks good. So finally, I click the Install button, and away it goes. This portion of the installation typically takes about five to 10 minutes on my machine. So I'm gonna step away, grab a cup of coffee. I'll be back once Ubuntu 24.10 has finished installing. And the installation completed, and I went ahead and rebooted the machine. Now let's log in to our desktop environment. By the way, they're going to default to using GNOME version 47 for the desktop environment. So let's log in. Well, we get a startup sound. A very lengthy startup sound. I like it. So I'm assuming that's a, a little bit of a callback to uh, earlier versions of Ubuntu. For those of you that didn't use uh, some of those very early versions of Ubuntu, Ubuntu used to have startup sounds. Every time you logged into your system, you'd get a startup sound. They had a different startup sound, I think, for every release they did. I'm assuming that one's probably from the very first version of Ubuntu, version 4.10, Warty Warthog being the 20 year anniversary. That's kind of neat. So when you first log into the GNOME desktop, this welcome application automatically launches. Let's go ahead and run through it just in case there's any further setup that I need to do here. So when I click next, it asks me, do I want to help improve Ubuntu by sharing some system data? So they want to collect some information about my computer. Do I mind sending them that data? This data is useful by the Ubuntu team for, you know, creating future versions of Ubuntu. They need to know who's actually using Ubuntu, what kind of hardware most people are using to run Ubuntu on, etc. So since they asked nicely, I don't mind sharing my system data with them, but if you do have a problem with that, you just click no here and turn that off for me. I'll leave it clicked to yes. Next up is get started with more applications. So do you wanna go ahead and open the software center and install more software right now? If you do, just hit open app center. For me, I'm done for now. So let me click finish and then the welcome application goes away. Some first impressions of the desktop. I really love the Oriole wallpaper, the oracular Oriole wallpaper, or whatever the hell oracular is. Anyway, the wallpaper is actually quite stunning. I, I, Ubuntu always has fantastic wallpapers. It's one of the things I really love about this distribution the gnome 47 desktop looks just fine as well and if i click the little ubuntu logo here in the bottom left hand corner of course you get your little dashboard where we can see what is installed out of the box on ubuntu now because i went with the default selection of apps remember it's kind of a minimal distribution ubuntu is really quite minimal as far as what it installs out of the box not a lot here we're going to have some of the default gnome uh, utilities like gnome clocks and and you know, GNOME calculator and things like that. We do have the security center here. Right, let's go ahead and click that and see what that does. I'm not familiar with this application security center. Do we want to require apps to ask for system permissions? This is experimental, so you can tick it on. If you tick it on, of course, you have to give sudo privileges. I'll leave that ticked off for now, but that is interesting that they include that. I don't believe I've seen that before. We also have software and updates. Now this tool here, you typically won't need to play with, but if you did not tick on in the installer to install your third party video drivers and Wi-Fi drivers, you may need to come in here and then go to the additional drivers tab and it's going to search for available drivers for your system. It's going to search for proprietary drivers for some of the, the devices that are attached to your computer. So this is where you go just in case you did not turn on that during the installation program. Other than that, everything else in here is pretty advanced stuff like turning on and off certain repositories of software. Don't play with this stuff unless you really know what you're doing. And then there is the updates tab. So if you want to go ahead and schedule automatic updates, if you're one of those people that want to update your machine regularly, but you're afraid you're going to forget about it at some point, you can schedule a daily update or a weekly update or whatever it is you're wanting to do. For me, I just like updating when I think about it. So I'm not going to play with that. Also, we have our software updater so if you click on this it just updates the system for you so it's running a quick check to see if there's any updates available now this iso came out 
just yesterday so there may or may not be any updates available for me and in this case there were not any updates so I'm okay but if there had been updates it would tell me hey there's these programs that need to be updated do you want to take the update yes or no but in my case we're all good also some of the apps installed we have startup applications now this is just part of your uh, startup applications as far as the things that auto start as soon as you log into GNOME and in this case really nothing is auto launching except the GNOME key ring but if you wanted a certain program to auto launch you would go into here and you would add and you would type the name of the program for example if I wanted to auto start Firefox you know like Firefox the browser give it a name and then give it the command the actual command that launches the program in this case this would be Firefox is the command and then you could give it a comment launch web browser and now that I add that if I log out and log back in when I log back in Firefox should auto launch let's see if this works so let's log out and let me go ahead and log back in and we get our startup sound and Firefox automatically launches so that is your startup applications now obviously I don't want the web browser automatically starting every time I open this virtual machine that was just an example so let me go back in here and remove Firefox from auto starting some other applications we should check out the text editor of course this is going to be GNOME's text editor I believe they're they defaulting to uh, text editor is this G edit or is this the new text editor they've been working on this is a text editor 47.0 just a horrible horrible name I don't know why they do this with these applications this is, these generic names really don't tell me anything about this particular application maybe if I go to the help information uh, yeah it's not going to give me any useful information either also under applications or in the dashboard here we have uh, of course the GNOME terminal is installed out of the box and let's play around with the terminal actually before we play around with the terminal what I want to do I, I use a terminal all the dang time so it doesn't make sense for me not to have the terminal over here and some of the most frequently used applications so I'm going to add it as a quick launcher over here so now that I've added that quick launcher I can just quickly hit the terminal icon to get the terminal or Ubuntu has a key binding that always brings up the terminal it's control alt T also brings up a terminal I'm gonna go ahead and make this full screen and let me zoom in the first thing I want to do is let's check system resource usage so let me run htop and of course Ubuntu for 20 years I've been complaining about this with Ubuntu I know that they don't want to have the ISO that big and of course it is kind of a minimal kind of distribution I already mentioned that they don't really install much out of the box but honestly you need to install a couple of more programs out of the box I'm gonna do a sudo apt update and and sudo apt install vim because I know vim is also not here out of the box and htop so these two programs just they should be installed on every single Linux distribution desktop distributions server distributions it doesn't matter Vim and htop if you're a distro maintainer please just have them installed out of the box and it's syncing the repos you can see it was searching the uh, oral backports and it's asking me to confirm do I really want to install these yes so let me go ahead and run htop now that it's installed and let's see what kind of system resource usage is going on here uh, CPU kind of low right now really shouldn't be using any CPU because I'm not doing much uh, RAM usage I'm using about one gig of the six gigs of RAM that I gave this VM that's pretty standard for GNOME and uh, RAM usage will depend on what file system you install Ubuntu as I went with the default installation which is an extend for file system you do have the option to use ZFS as your file system as well but if you go through the experimental features in the installer you could choose ZFS but I went with extend for now if I didn't know what file system I chose I could run this command here to find out lsblk which is the list block command it lists your block devices your drives and I give it this flag dash f for file system and you can see my file systems if I zoom back out so you can actually 
see the output here. Uh, the main partition is right here, VDA2, and it's a, an Extend 4 file system. Now, most of this output here were loopback devices uh, that are snap packages installed out of the box. Now, some people don't like the fact that LSBLK has these loopback devices as snaps, you know, as part of the output. You can actually get rid of that in the output. If I do LSBLK-E space 7, now I get the LSBLK command without all the loopback devices. So you, know, you get a, a truncated version of the LSBLK without all the extra mounted snap packages. Now Ubuntu, I'm pretty sure, uses Pipewire. They've been defaulting to Pipewire as the audio server for a while. So if I do a where is Pipewire, you can see the Pipewire binary is here. So Pipewire is installed. Also being it's GNOME, and GNOME has been kind of defaulting to Wayland for the display server for at least the last couple of years. Uh, Ubuntu is also uh, defaulting to Wayland here on GNOME. But if I was unsure, I could actually do a check on this. I could echo and then dollar sign and then all caps XDG underscore session underscore type. And then you're either going to get X or Wayland as the output. In this case, I got Wayland. So we're using GNOME on Wayland. Now we know snaps are here out of the box. If you want to see which programs are installed as a snap, do snap list and you can see Firefox, the browser, is installed as a snap, which kind of makes sense because your web browser gets updated all the time and snaps auto-update. You know, they auto-update themselves. You never have to think about them. So it kind of makes sense that Firefox, you just ship it with a snap. Uh, it'll save a lot of uh, heartache and pain as far as the constant updating that browsers need. Other than that, Really no other snaps are here out of the box other than, you know, like some common libraries and stuff. But the Snap Store, the, uh, the Ubuntu Software Center, is also a snap package. Now let me exit out of the terminal here and let's actually take a look at the App Center. And this is a Flutter-based App Center. I believe they're, they're basing this on Flutter, kind of like the... Uh, the installation program was a flutter based application same thing with their new app center and it does look quite good if you want to explore i mean you could search for specific applications if you knew the name of a specific application you wanted or you could go in here and search by category for example they've got games they've got development productivity they've got their featured applications as well for me, I'm going to install an application just to see how things work. I'm going to install GIMP. GIMP, I love GIMP. Now, GIMP, how is it going to install it? Well, there's GIMP latest stable 2.10.38, I'm assuming. Is that going to install it as a snap pack? Yeah, it says snap crafters here. So let's go ahead and install. And the installation is going to take a minute or two. GIMP is not a terribly small program. You can actually see the download size of it is 440 megabytes in size. And you also get the licensing information here. GIMP, of course, is GPL software. Now, while GIMP is taking some time to install, let me click on the menu here. And we do have two virtual workspaces. We could switch between the two. And, you know, I, I, I must say, even in the virtual machine with the uh, virtual machine drivers here, it actually switches between these two virtual workspaces very quickly. Now I'm using the mouse scroll wheel to swap between workspace one where the app center is open and workspace two which is the empty workspace you know and then I can click on it or I can just go back to workspace one here. Oops. Uh, yeah. I guess I missed that up. Is GIMP still installing? Hopefully it is. If I go back yeah it's still in the middle of installation. I will say that I've been waiting about two minutes now for GIMP to install here and it looks like the progress bar, the little circle here, is nearly to the end. So it should be nearing the end. I typically don't install software through graphical software centers. You know, I much prefer installing them at the terminal because the terminal would be telling me what's happening. So I would know if this thing has uh, got an error or what's going on, you know, or I'd get some kind of progress bar in the terminal. But it looks like it finally completed. And let's go ahead and click open to see if GIMP launches properly. But in the terminal, I could have installed it with a uh, the apt package manager sudo apt install gimp or if i wanted the snap pack which is what i got here i could have done a snap install gimp in the terminal and again I, I just like doing it at the terminal because if anything goes wrong i actually get some kind of confirmation message or error message but gimp did launch correctly 
I go to about GIMP. This is GIMP 2.10.38. GIMP is getting very close to its 3.0 release, the long-awaited 3.0 release, and I'm going to be pretty excited once that finally releases. One thing I want to do is I do want to get into the uh, settings. So let me type settings and go into... I want to go into appearance here and I want to change to a dark theme. By default, they're using a light theme for me. I like dark themes. I just wanted to see what the dark theme and dark wallpaper is. I do like the, the dark gray, almost black GTK theme, but I don't like the wallpaper also being the same shade. It's not enough contrast for me. But let me see what other wallpapers they have here that I might like. So let me uh, make this window a little smaller. And then, yeah, I really like abstract art wallpapers, especially. <laughs> I really like some of this stuff. If you like nature, of course, we've, we've got to have an Oriole, right? you got to have some birds and, of course, some more art here. And here is an Oriole where I'm on the dark theme, so I get the black-gray wallpaper. If I was on the light, I would get the purplish version of this. And then really nice snowy mountaintop really just beautiful wallpapers i really like the default wallpaper though i'd probably stick with that and of course because it is the 20 year anniversary of ubuntu if you want to you can be really nostalgic and go back to the really dull brown shade of wallpaper here that is very uh, nostalgic for those of you that use those early versions of ubuntu because ubuntu was a brown wallpaper brown gtk brown icon set kind of like it was a poopy color everywhere you looked on those early versions of Ubuntu. Really for the first, I would say, it was like the first six years of Ubuntu, I think they were, everything was brown. They didn't move to theming everything with purplish and orange hues until I want to say around 2010. And what's this wallpaper here? Oh, I kind of like that. Uh, again, a little bit of the history of Ubuntu. That was the original logo, and then that was the logo until here just in the last year or so, and then they finally moved to this logo. So different versions of the Ubuntu logo over the years as well. For me, I'm going to go back to the default wallpaper. So there you have it, a very quick and cursory overview of the recent release of Ubuntu. That's Ubuntu version 24.10. Let me get the name right. Oracular Oriole. So really impressive release. Now this is an interim release. This is not a long-term support release of Ubuntu. So the interim releases, they only get nine months of support. And honestly, you probably don't want to run the interim releases unless you're an Ubuntu fan and you like reinstalling every six months to nine months. You don't mind, you know, running something that's only going to have support just for a few months. And then, you know, once 2504, which is another interim release, once it comes out next April, you move to that one. That one's only going to get nine months of support and then you move to the next one. Uh, most computer users, most Ubuntu users, I would say probably 90%, maybe 95% of Ubuntu users, they stick strictly to the LTS releases and, and they just skip over the interim releases. But again, if you're a fanboy or you just like playing with cool new programs, new technology, maybe you want to see some of the latest development that's going on with Ubuntu, especially if you're somebody that is helping contribute development for Ubuntu, then obviously you want to check out this latest release. I think it's a fantastic release. Just the few minutes I've spent with it, I'm very impressed. Now before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode. Matt, James, Steve, Armor, Dragon, Darloff, Daedalus, GDR, George, Lee, Matthew, Methos, Arian, Paul, Peace, Arch, and Fedora, Realities for Less, Red Prophet, Roland, Soul Astry, Tenrin, Warge into an Ubuntu, and Willie. These guys, they're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this quick look at Ubuntu 24.10 would not have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now, these are all my supporters over on Patreon. I don't have any corporate sponsors. I'm sponsored by you guys, the community. If you like my work and want to see more videos about Linux and free and open source software, subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. Peace, guys.